Oh, yeah. Also, yeah. nice to see you, my friend. How you been? I'm good, very good. How are you? I can see your smiling face. That you have many things to share. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, hopefully. Yes, no, no, what well, we can say, no. But first of all, but thank you again for, uh, for this um, honor to do a second interview with you. But now as a special, I watch all the films that you've, um, that you mentioned, the, 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 the ones you, you mentioned to me and, and also following your a and page and all of them I like it so much. We're going to talk about, you know, each one of them. But before that, I want to say congratulations for the baby in the basket. Um, your uh, and, and and Nathan Chepka, uh, fabulous director, and Andy Crane can be able to reach the goal with the funds with fantastic cast. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, they're actually location scouting at the moment. So, yeah, everything's moving now. Um, yes. Just did a bit of casting. So, yeah, very excited now that we can put the crowdfunder behind us. Fantastic. And for those people that are uh, oral fans, uh, films like me are very, you know, looking forward for this film. I like the, com the, the combination um, of the story. Um, the rosemary with the home man met a man and all these things was fantastic and what about the fabulous uh cast amber dointron from the winnie the pool um and annabelle the, the legendary annabelle Leyen, and also alessandra fade uh senegan and the fabulous paul barber also he was also in renegades fabulous feature film yeah. I like I, I like that film so much as well. So what can I say? Great cast for those uh, with huge base fan on this feature film. And also it's going to be expected to be shot in October, right? Uh, yes, so we'll probably we're going to look at late September and then shooting into October. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. No, but what can I say? Uh, these are type of films that I can imagine there's going to bring a lot of audience and and looking forward also to see in Mexico City because, you know, you know, Mexico audience, we are very big fans of the oral feature of oral movies. And this film has all the characteristics that is going to bring huge audience. So I'm, I'm very confident for that. <laughs> Yep, I hope so. I hope we can bring something that you'll all enjoy there as well. Fantastic, fantastic. And and also, I uh, wanted to say congratulations because you've been recently, uh, you before the film is get um, shoot and of course released, but just because of the script, you receive already awards as a best screen player, um, as a Gill, Gill International Screening Awards, uh, Freedom, uh, awards and how you feeling about that freedom films award and also Bethlo films festivals as a final finalist how you feeling about that Tom? yeah i'm very happy i mean i was quite pleased with the script when i wrote it it was a bit different but um it was based on an idea that i'd worked on from the beginning um mm -hmm. and it wasn't you know when we were thinking about doing the film we weren't driven by uh what the distributor says is popular at the moment we just wanted to make um a film that we wanted to make mm -hmm. um yeah so you know this was a bit different I, it wasn't really like a, a commission like my other ones where i was kind of writing for hire so yeah i had more control and i just kind of wanted to see if the script came off as well as i thought it would um, but I never, I, you know, I didn't expect to get quite so many at this stage. And hopefully, you know, one or two more before we shoot, that, you know, we'll get a couple more awards. Yes, no, but you, you can tell, you know, before it's already, um, the film is already, you know, actually uh, made. It's just the script itself, it receiving awards. 
And not only that, some um, reading your biography, you have an extended experience, but not only as a filmmaker, but before that, you also a film producer and also you were a film journalist, uh, you know, specific, specific, you're specific, uh, um, specifically for films in the film industry. I think yeah. that give you to you a strong feedback experience, you know, to know exactly what the audience is looking for. Do you think that is beneficial for you as a screenwriter before be a, a film journalist to know what is the the most demand or the people's preference? So for example, you're doing all of feature film, but you're saying, okay, I'm gonna make the combinations or suggesting also with the with the, with your with the, with a crew making all men meets with a rosemary you know combinations do you think that's is something give you um you know advantage you know or no i don't say the advantage but the the skills to be able to know that uh yeah i think so i mean i've i've always been really interested in film anyway so you know i kind of keep an eye on what is doing well at the moment um with things like A24 films, you know, they've been bringing these kind of films back into the limelight again and making them popular again. So all these kind of gothic horrors and spiritual horrors, um, you know, they all go back to things like The Wicker Man and Rosemary's Baby. Um, yeah, so I mean, a lot of the independent distributors that I work with, they might not necessarily be looking for these kind of things which is kind of why we had to do it ourselves. But, you know, mm -hmm. the, the audience you can see is definitely out there. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll make it and then uh, hopefully we'll get a few more awards and we'll pick up a really, I think, ambitious distributor is what we're probably looking for. Definitely, definitely. Just reading, you know, the reference and the previous, you know, I, I can tell that, uh, how good you are as a writer and also, but not only because of the words, is because also I have the honor to watch several of your feature films. For example, let's start for the first one I watch, I like so much. Even my husband, he said the same thing, he's agree with me. With The Dark Next Falls is the same with directors and co-producer Baby from the Basket. You work with the same um, fantastic uh, people, Nathan Chepka, and writer, you, you were one of the writers uh, along with him. And said so, okay this one is uh it's a suspense but not too much with the horror that one was very good and you know those type of films that i like to think about it it's like you want to be inside the story and it's not no much to spoil like what is going to happen the next you have to guess okay i'm thinking this is going to be happening this is not going to be happening and you never expect okay oh she betrayed that I don't want to talk too much because I want to encourage people to uh, watch it in Amazon yeah. because the best way to support our, the independent um, the independent um, industry, our industry is, you know, start buying uh, or rent or buy our um, these feature films. And this one in particular, this is a film that was getting in, into it and I was, that she was doing this, she was doing that, and, you know, you. I like those type of films that you make a lot of critical yeah. thinking. This is one of them. Can you tell us um, what inspired you to write this one? It was exactly that, really. It was those type of films where, um, you know, me and Nathan, we wanted to do something that would be quite simple, quite cost effective to shoot. Um, and so, you know, the idea of someone being in the middle of like rural Scotland where it's just miles of fields and things like that just disappearing. Um, we, we love those kind of films where someone early on disappears from the film and then you, you're not sure where mm -hmm. they've gone. Um, and then we liked, you know, thrillers from the 70s and 80s and 90s. And a lot of them, you know, they got lots of twists and turns along the way. So that was very much what inspired us. We wanted to basically do something that was quite atmospheric and like slow building. Um, because we wanted it to sort of, you know, a lot of distributors will say, you know, you need something happening every 10 minutes. And, you know, they want something that's a bit like that. 
but we wanted to kind of slowly rise and you know build up to a big the big finale so yeah hopefully we did that and i think we got some we got some really nice reviews for the film which we yes. were really happy with um and yeah we've been pleased with how it's done and we're hoping just to get a nice uk release for that one soon um so that's coming that's coming to the uk quite soon <clears throat> and hopefully a few more territories as well mm -hmm. um, but yeah that was just our thinking really because all the distributors i work with they want kind of creature features they have a certain you know they have, they have a checklist of films they want to do and there's maybe five or six different types but we weren't really we didn't really fancy doing anything in you know within those those archetypes really so yeah we just wanted to make something quite simple that you know we wanted to make mm -hmm. um and yeah nathan shot this one around covid time so mm. um right in the middle between sort of lockdowns there was a window where he could shoot i think subsequently it might just be where he shot it that you know you just don't see many people around at all but you, you know we we didn't have to get people out of the way. There was just no one there. So it really helped the atmosphere of our film. Um, and, you know, I think he shot it around autumn time. I had a lot of dry days. So, you know, it looked quite, uh, the locations looked very nice. They were still green, very colorful. Um, so yeah, it looked really good as well. Yes, but basically I have, interview three filmmakers fantastic filmmakers that they have they took the challenge to shoot during the COVID. uh one of them during the COVID, how are four you know uh, a fabulous filmmaker too and then uh carlos costa from portugal he also did the same thing now you're the one from this one so that's my admiration because there's something like uh carlos costa says artists is artists art Artists is difficult to to stop doing art because um because of lockdowns of, of the external circumstances. We always look for there's no excuses. Like we always look look the the solution or the source to continue making art. Uh, how I for yeah. saying very similar. He says no one is gonna stop me. I have to do something. You you feel the same. And how you feel, Tom, in the sense like back in the day we were having restrictions, and I remember UK one was was one of the countries they established a very strong, very uh, um, a strict restrictions, specifically yeah. for filmmakers. How you feeling about that? In you making this film, uh, we were quite fortunate, really, because we. We kind of got it on, so there were still restrictions. There wasn't a full lockdown. Um, I think actually they were quite lucky. It was either just before the shoot or just after where there were more travel restrictions. So you couldn't travel out of your county and things like that. Um, and I think they just missed that, thankfully. Uh, but in terms of like the numbers on set and having to have, you know, distancing, it wasn't too bad because there's maybe, you know, 10 or so people at the most. I know they had, even after all the kind of restrictions were kind of finishing, you still had to have a COVID marshal on set and that's a big cost. Some films were like, you know, spending 10% of their budget on COVID restrictions and all the things mm. you have to do, like have a COVID marshal. Yep, that's, uh, so yeah. And then they were having this problem where there was basically less choice of locations. Um, but yeah, so yeah, for Renegades, it was a bit of a problem. They had a couple of delays and then they shot and they were kind of limited to what they could, where they could shoot um, and how much crew they could have. Uh, when Darkness Falls, it almost helped in a way, I think, because, uh, you know, they had a location which doubled as um, accommodation as well. And they kept everything quite, you know, tight. So, they were filming all the locations were quite close to the uh, the accommodation very small crew and there was no problems getting the actresses in and out when they were required so 
yeah, I think, you know, that it wasn't too many problems there and didn't add too many costs, but they were probably quite lucky, I think. Yes, yeah, no, no, yeah. Very great movie to watch, even even having that, um, you know, situation, but it was fantastic. Let me tell you something. With the character Andrea, I was very pissed. She made me pissed. <laughs> like, <laughs> And I want to say to my wife, encourage people to watch it. Very good. You, you, uh, you engage me. You know, like I said, you know, it's a fabulous cast a story. And and what can I say? Just, that was the first one I watched, and then the second one, like you said, Renegades. I'm a specialist. Wonderful job working with fabulous cast. And before that, congratulations is um, uh, the National Films Award is. Uh, is nominated as a best action TV and film renegades. Yeah. Congratulations for that nomination. All the best luck to you. Between you and I, I vote for you. I vote for the renegades. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, I love it. No, what wonderful film. Wonderful film. And also you got also the, the category as a best actor support actress, Betsy Kensit. So you were uh, this film. It's nominated for two different categories. So how are you feeling about this film to be in, uh, nominated by the National Films Award? Yeah, it's very pleasing. It's quite a uh, prestigious awards amongst um, sort of the indie indie films in, in Britain. And you know, there's never really too many big kind of ceremonies in, in Britain really that celebrates uh, the, the non-mainstream filmmakers really, or the independent filmmakers. So yeah, it's nice to get a bit of um, recognition. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll pick up one or two of those awards. I'm pretty sure that Renegades will because it's, it's fabulous. One of the best movies I ever watched, to be honest. I love it so much. Wonderful director, Daniel Ciri, Cirilli. And then, um, what can I say? I'm a big fan of Danny Trejo, Lee Majors. How are you feeling working with this fabulous? You know, we grew up. I grew up in the sets with Danny Trejo, Lee Majors. I heard him, you know, since I was a kid. Same thing for you. How are you feeling about that? Yeah. No, I was really excited. So mm. um, as soon as I kind of knew who was going to be in it, um, I was writing for everyone. So I was writing, you know, specifically for Danny Trejo, for Lee Majors. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a fan of everyone in the film, mm -hmm. really, to be honest. So all of the British cast that are in there, like Nick Moran, Paul Barber. Who yeah, really Paul pleased. Barber, yes. Yeah, very happy to be working with him again soon as well. Um, yeah, I was a massive fan. So, you know, the fanboy in me was getting quite excited. Yes. Um, yeah, so I still had to be quite professional and get on and write my scripts. Exactly. Exactly. And Paul Barber is going to be being in the basket. So fabulous. It did yeah. a fantastic job in Renegades. And I like the stories that like I said in the first interview I uh, we have to we have last time. I like that, you know, people, you know, senior people be, you know, um, an action movie. And I think it gives a lot of positive, you know, message, you know, to to the senior generation and in an era and then my mom watching my mom she's uh 60 65 plus and she said oh i like it and she enjoy it and, you know I, this is i was looking for a movie like that you know this one is the perfect one <laughs> i told her yeah very beautiful with amazing beautiful story and also a fabulous uh cinematographer uh vincent from yeah. the yeah. we need it's a pool blood and honey well. yes 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 i like his work amazing and and what was the inspiration of writing the Renegades? How you come up to make this story? So yeah, basically the Jonathan, the producer, he had a he had a basic outline already in place. So you know, the idea of these old kind of uh soldiers coming together to get revenge on on uh, this uh, criminal who takes out mm -hmm. one of their old buddies. Uh so that was kind of in place. And then he'd already attached Lee Majors to it because he's very, very good mm -hmm. friends with Lee. Um, it's quite nice being friends with the million, $6 million man. Yes. Um, yes. 
yeah, so yeah, they had the, the storyline in place and then I you know, I wrote the first couple of drafts and then as as cast members are being added, you start changing roles slightly. Um and we were just both inspired. We're both around the same age, uh, myself and Jonathan. So we both grew up watching all the, the classic mm-hmm. action movies. You know, we all we all watched all the old TV shows like The A-Team and The Fall Guy. Yes, uh, We yes. were just inspired by that whole generation of film, mm-hmm. TV. And we just wanted to do something kind of old school and a bit fun. So, you know, we weren't going out there looking for Oscars or anything, but we we just wanted to make a good fun old school action movie yes yes yeah. yes and how they feel it about to make this because like you can you can tell if, even their actors in making the films do you did they they i can feel when they in the in the film i you you can perceive for example i'm not easy to perceive things i can perceive they were they enjoy to do this project, make this feel big legend with another legend. Did they did they express anything about this project? They they like they about how they feel being this in this film working, you know, all this together. Well, I think that's what attracted a lot of the cast to it. I think several of them had worked with Jonathan before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the, the other ones like Danny Trejo, Michael Pere, they'd worked mm-hmm. with Daniel. Um, so everyone sort of came together and it, you know, you don't, re- you know, as you said before, you've got this cast of sort of older cast. Mm-hmm. You don't always see that. Um, mm-hmm. And you don't really see it so much with action films anymore. So I think, you know, everyone kind of enjoyed coming together, and particularly that group of the, the renegades. Yes. Uh, they, they really got along you know, very well. So there's a good chemistry there. And I think that shows up on screen as well. Yes, yes. You should looking for for part two. That one will be cool. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hopefully. There's, yes. Uh, there's no, no words yet, but you know, you never know. Exactly, exactly. And I really enjoy it. I watched twice, uh, one with my husband, one with my mom, and, and she, she enjoyed it so much. And then I watched the Fernando, directors with Frank Waterfield and Scott Jeffrey Snow from Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and cinematography being Vincent Knight. Wonderful film, too. Why the tornado? Why the fire? Why this film? What, what is the. What inspired you to. What inspired you to write this film? Uh. I'm just such a massive fan of all types of films, really. And, you know, sometimes I'm quite happy to sit down and watch something, you know, like a B-movie, a shark film or a disaster film. So they just came to me one day. I'd worked with Scott quite a few times. And he said, would you like to write a fire twister film? Mm -hmm. Fire Nado. Um, I said, yeah. (laughs) Because I think, you know, the concept sounded fun to me. Um, And they said, you know, you could write it and you can have a little bit of humor in it uh because i don't always get the freedom to put humor in these films sometimes the distributors want it kind of deadly serious mm-hmm. um i think sometimes if you've got a few a few jokes in it it probably makes it slightly better mm-hmm. um <clears throat> but yeah no I, I really enjoyed writing that and making this kind of little um adventure story against this this fire tornado We Mm kind of knew that because of the budget that we needed a side story. So that's where this whole um, subplot comes in with the home invasion, which Mm kind of happens parallel to the the tornado. Um, That way there's a bit of action happening when there's no, you know, the tornado is not destroying everything in sight. So I think um, it was, yeah, it was fun to write on both sides of that, that, that story really. The, the kind of heist subplot and then the, the disaster movie and then they kind of collide at the end so um, yeah really good fun to write and I think they did a really good job on that one yes it looks better uh, when I saw that tr- the fire tornado looks very you know real and and actually I live in the area where it's very common to, for us to have a not fire tornadoes but tornadoes and I was yeah. when I watched the film I was 
can you imagine is is something like that comes it happens in the united states and some of the states like in colorado you know and some of the states i heard that when there's a combination with the with the winds and there's external fires and they become like a fire tornadoes but that one in particular you give me a lot of stress when i was watching you know saw the big tornado and, and destroying one thing and then pushing uh telling hey get out from the house and people then he's coming and he's coming and people didn't realize it until it was in there you know you know this yeah. kind of yeah <laughs> a very good movie to watch but fabulous in the effects you know you can tell you you never tell this um the the cg do you use cgi for that one right for for the tornado yeah yes awesome <clears throat> yeah. And then another fabulous, uh, I like the Area 51 incident, the fabulous CGI uh, work, same director with Frank Waterfield and Scott Refrit. He was also one of the cast. You are the, the writer. Um, why the Area 51? The, are you a fan for the UFOs uh, you like so much? Or maybe I don't have to ask you because it's very obvious, you know, why Area 51? I think everybody's curious. Yeah, I think, um... Yeah, so what they wanted is they wanted something where uh, people get trapped inside this this big kind of complex, and then there's an alien in there as well with them. Um, and obviously, I you know I grew up watching things like Aliens. I love things like um, there was a film called Screamers with Peter Weller, which is kind of similar, where they get locked in this bunker. Um, yeah, I love those kind of films, and I thought you know it would be quite fun to write again. And again, you know, they just they didn't want to take it, you know, too seriously. Um, so there were a few comical moments in it as well. But I think, um, you know, with these two in particular, they had a little bit more money than usual and they spent a bit more time on the special effects. So I think that's why they probably stand up over some of the other ones that they've done. Fabulous. No, I, I like it so much. And also... Great, David Dowsett, uh, the actual Winnie, the pool from the Winnie, the the actual Winnie, he was yeah. also part of the cast. Fabulous film to watch. And um, do you have any, are you building some ideas about the current situation, about the aliens? You know, there's a lot in the news mentioned about um, alien ships uh, is being found in the United States, you know, they're about the NASA, <clears throat> the official yeah. announcement that we expected to receive on the 31st. But at the end, these people didn't say anything what we expected, but this, this, there was a soldier come out and say, yes, yeah, you know, it says collect some non-humans, alien chips and things like that. Are you, are you interested to write something about that? Um, I, yeah, possibly. I wouldn't say no, but I think... Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely something that's going to cross the mind of um, Scott and Reese at some point. Um, I know they're, they're very focused on doing things which are like um, old um, old stories, like they, so they've got Winnie the Pooh, Peter Pan coming up, um, a Bambi adaptation. So maybe when they get back to doing um, sci-fi things again, they might sort of look into aliens and UFOs and things. I probably awesome. personally, yeah, personally myself, there was a film a few years ago made in Britain, low budget one called Cosmos. Mm. Um, and that took a very kind of low key approach to um, aliens. So it's about these guys that intercept this um, radio transmission. And so it's not really like, you know, there's no big alien set pieces. It's kind of contained at these three guys. And there's a bit of friction between them. Um, mm -hmm. trying to de you know decode this um, signal that they've received that could be from aliens so you know I'd be more inclined to do more of an like, intimate character thing rather than low you know big alien invasions mm -hmm. that's good that's good yes but I think nowadays we are facing a lot of things to be inspired you know especially for artists like you are a writer and that's good and so you mentioned about the so this, this there there's a plans for you working for for the Disney characters or that's what you said that. Oh no, that's yeah. that you know that's what Scott and uh, Reese are doing at the moment. So they're very kind of focused on stuff that mirrors mm -hmm. Disney, I guess. Ah, um, 
but obviously the so, you know most all these ideas precede disney anyway so you know the bambi was a story before before disney got to it oh um, interesting yeah so no i think i'm more interested at the moment i'm producing you know a few of my own things and then uh, we'll see we'll see what happens mm-hmm. um yeah i mean I've, i do have a project in mind with um it's going to be very much like aliens and a little bit of a mix of aliens and predator uh so that that's probably going to be a couple of years away because it's a slightly bigger project so awesome yeah, so that'll, that'll take a bit more time to get going but i think um that's another exciting one and that'll definitely have lots of um you know special effects and things Awesome. No, you you will do it. And and I'm pretty sure I know the, the quality of writer you are, your professionalism and, and you know have a bit admiration to you and watching all these films, you know, it I, I can tell by experience, you know, you're top of the world, top of the top writers. Congratulations. And also congratulations for the nominees and prestigious awards and also festivals. And looking forward to continue to follow up your career and looking forward for Baby in the Basket. I feel honored that yeah. my husband and I, we, we contribute with the, some love to this feature film and and be part of the thanks credit. Thank you so much uh, to Nathan also as well. And yeah. all the best luck to you. I'm pretty sure I'm very confident now uh, Latin America. I'm speak about Latin America because I'm also I'm from Mexico. We're gonna receive this feature film very happy with the open arms, you know, and and not, not only that, also United States, uh, almost from, from Texas as well. And I'm pretty sure, you know, the, the oral feature films fans is growing, it's, more, it's everywhere. So this one has the, uh, my personal opinion reading, that description has a great combination and especially having great writers like you making, you know, this film is, is a completely success. I hope so. Yeah, I think um, yeah, we're, we're very excited about this, and we just you know we see it as the first step into making you know a few more, um, you know horror, you know just skipping different genres really, that things that we really want to do. And it's fantastic, Tom. How you uh, make different films type uh, type of films, oral action, a suspense. Uh, fantasy because aliens is fantasy yeah. and natural disasters like a, uh, tornadoes and all these things you're you can do you're very diverse so that's why I can yeah. I like can see you, you what, whatever they ask you you made it you made your research you made your 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 skills is there and and what can I say looking forward for your for your future projects and, and especially this one and the one for the one you uh, the one you mentioned about the aliens and and the one is going to be more um high uh, budget film and pretty sure it's, it's gonna it's gonna be you you're gonna make it because this is just the beginning for many many projects renegades like and, and somehow i think that one is was a huge store for you for so many and and think I'm thinking the same thing for Baby in the Basket. Why can I say congratulations? Thank you, Angela. We re- really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank so you. That's, wanna... that's really key. That, you know, oh, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Learning. Yes, and looking forward to continue meeting with you to do a follow up for these films and for more projects you're working on. Do you want to share another project besides it in the short term or besides Baby the Basket that you're working on? Yeah, I mean, I've there's going to be a couple of announcements soon. So I've done a couple of films with uh, Mark Lester, who he made Commando, uh, Firestarter, Class of 1984. So yeah, I've done a couple of horror films with him based on kind of old established characters. Um, So there should be a few announcements on those soon. I've just been writing, quite excited about one of my just been writing at the moment which is a kind of like folk horror film um mm-hmm. which is going to be made in singapore um mm. yeah so that was quite interesting really making a film for a different market entirely so um my script's going to be rewritten in chinese and then made made and shot over in singapore but 
I'm quite excited about that because I'm always interested in folklore and folk stories and it very much taps into kind of like Asian folk folk tales. Um, okay. So that will be quite interesting. And I think that will also travel well back over here. Um, so yeah, I'm quite excited about that one to see if that goes ahead quite soon. That's um, good. Yeah, and then just, you know, for the for the time being, Baby in the Basket is in, in my mind. And then just start to think ahead to the next couple of films that um, myself and Nathan and Gary are going to do together as well. Yes, and I think you will enjoy a lot. Singapore is wonderful people. Actually, I interviewed uh, Miss Singapore. She got a, the, the third place, uh, um, Lorraine name, and she's from there. And I will connect with you. Uh, I will connect her to you and maybe you never know. So it will be a good connection. It's because she's I from there. She the yes, she's yeah, she's very she's she's known in her country and in Singapore, very lovely lady, inspirational ladies, also very artistical. So I think it will be a good connection for you. <laughs> okay, that could be good. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. And she she's a uh, she uh, she's a big supporter for the independent filmmakers and also for the arts and and what can I say? Um, beautiful people, beautiful lady. Also, her son Mark. Uh, and and yeah, looking forward for that film. I love Singapore. <laughs> Congratulations! You you want to share uh, something besides this the the upcoming projects? Do you want to share more to your fans? I just thank everyone for their support, and I hope that you know. One thing I you know I hope is that everyone you know in the independent film industry kind of supports each other i know you know some people do you know actively support each other and do well other people say it but then don't do it and we you know we did have some issues with our crowdfunder with you know our rival filmmaker trying to sabotage it so there's a lot of kind of you know jealousy and silliness going on i think you know there's no need for it i think everyone just sticks together and then you know we can all kind of ride the same boat together really in the independent in the independent market because it's very difficult uh to navigate and um yeah we just need to you know support each other and everyone needs as much support as possible and then the other thing is um try not to pirate too many movies because it can be the difference between you know maybe they're being a renegade to or maybe not being a renegade to um so you know, other film, films as well suffer from it. So it's difficult, but, you know, hopefully the the indie market will improve soon and then everything will be on the up. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Looking forward to see you soon and follow up. I'm going to follow up, of course, The Baby in the Basket. Looking forward for that film, more films of you. And... And watching what is the new is, uh, is is sharing on the network because I'm pretty sure that you're grabbing ideas. You're nonstop writer. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah nonstop. But yeah, thanks for having me on again, Angela. I'd love to come on again. Oh, thank you so much, Tom. And, and see you soon. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.